This next project, M15, we're still using our conveyor application, <clears throat> but we want to use another timer. We want to apply an RTO retentive undelayed timer. The only difference between an RTO and a TON is that with a TON timer type instruction, when the run goes false, it resets everything. With the RTO retentive undelayed timer, when the run goes false, nothing happens. It just stops. And then when the run goes true again, it starts up again right where it left off. So our application is going to be a lubrication system for our conveyors that after so many, we'll say hours, even though in the lab you're going to do seconds at the most minutes, after so many hours of accumulated run time, of the bearings, the shafts and the bearings, that we're going to put a pulse into the grease reservoir and push grease through the fittings into the bushings to push the dirty lube out and push in clean lube. So this is a really good application for an RTO. So let's do it. This is not a big lab, but it's an interesting one. Retentative on delay timer. The primary difference between a TON on delay timer and a RTO retentive on delay timer is that with the TON which we've already used in the former project when the rung goes false in other words the rung state in when it goes true the TON starts incrementing and when it goes false it completely resets the reason that they call the RTO retentive is because it does not reset it just pauses so when the run goes true, it starts incrementing. The ET starts incrementing towards the PT. And if the run goes false, it stops, but nothing else happens. That is the only difference. What that allows you to do is to accumulate total run time on something by using the condition. In this case, we're using input zero. But this could be a memory location that is the output for a motor starter for a conveyor motor. And so every time the conveyor runs, input zero comes on. It's not input zero, you know, it's, it's an output bit, but that the run goes true when the motor runs, it goes false when it's not running. Therefore, over a period of time, it will keep accumulating in increments, pausing when the run goes false, beginning, all, beginning again when it goes true until the PT and the ET are equal, or you could say until the ET equals the PT, then it's done. Now, you're, you're looking at size fault here. Output zero is left over from a previous project. So I'm gonna change this to something that's not being used. We'll just go up to output eight and output eight. Remember, I'm doing this with a simulator. So let's, um, and we could use a different input too. That way we're not messing with any logic over here. So I'll just put in input eight as well. Now I know in your lab project, it shows input zero and output zero. So let's save this and download it. We have to start the simulator. Once we start the simulator, we need to power it up. We'll move it out of the way. We do need to see eight, input eight and output eight. And let's download. We'll do what we did in the manual that way, if you had any questions regarding what you were doing, they'll be answered. I ask you to lightly tap uh, input zero. Now remember that this manual was originally written before the simulator existed. But we're doing these lab projects with the simulator. And that way, we know for sure that you can use the simulator or a real piece of hardware. Now the hardware is obvious. The simulator wasn't quite so obvious. Tapping and inputs uh, more difficult to do with the simulator, but I'm going to go to input 8. want to make sure it's running and it's not faulted, so turn 8 on and turn it off. And I might have been able to do it a little bit faster than that, but you see that it accumulated to a little over half a second. Then, while watching the ET value flip, the input on and leave it on, observe and then flip on input 0 and leave it on. So, what basically what we did was we had you flip on input one, which is the reset. So we'll put that on and notice that it resets to zero. While watching the ET value, flip input one on and leave it on. Observe and then flip on input zero and leave it on. Well, input zero is now input eight. So 
uh, input 8 is true, but of course nothing's happening because as long as you have the reset on, it never accumulates. Did the timer data type reset before you flipped input 0 on? Yes. Is the ET value accumulating with input 0 on? No. Why? Because the reset is also on, so it's continually resetting it. While watching the ET value flip, the reset on and off for 1 to 2 seconds at a time. Did it let it accumulate? So we'll flip this. We'll flip input 1, which is our reset. I just kind of double tapped it. Did it let it accumulate until the ET equaled the PT? No. Uh, basically what I was asking you here is if I keep resetting it, will it accumulate? That's really the crux of this little spot in the lab here was as long as you are doing the reset, it won't accumulate. It'll accumulate when the reset is off, but as soon as you turn reset back on, it just resets it. So it's not retentive if you operate it in that method. Not a trick question, but tricky to answer. How does this behavior differ from the TON? Okay, with the TON, if the input was true, there was no reset with the TON. In a sense, you could say by leaving the input high, true, and then toggling the reset on and off, it is behaving similar to a TON with you continually resetting it. You let it accumulate a little bit and then you reset it. Well, there wasn't much to that. Now we're going to uh, continue and go into an actual practical application with the RTO. In the next piece of this lab, M15, which is an application for RTO, we had you modify your existing logic for controlling the electric motor for conveyor one. And we're looking at those changes and you see that what we've done is we've branched around the direct coil for motor conveyor one with some logic. The first piece of that logic is the RTO. And this RTO, as we know already, whenever this rung is true, in other words, when the conveyor is running, because if, if the direct coil is turning on that bit, then this timer is accumulating. So whenever the motor for the conveyor one runs, then this timer accumulates. When it times out or when ET accumulates up to the value of the preset time, PT, then Q into this timing pulse will put out a pulse for four seconds, for 4,000 milliseconds. And the output of this TP, timing pulse, Q, is the loop solenoid and then a loop complete. Now this is a direct coil, which means that whenever this times out, it enables this timer, which puts out a pulse for whatever the preset time is, four seconds. This direct coil then, is on for four seconds and when Q goes false this falling edge coil turns on that bit loop complete and if you look the reset for RTO is loop complete so you know the motor goes on and off this accumulates it retains the value and pretty soon the ET gets up to equal to PT the Q out triggers this timing pulse which turns on the loop solenoid, and at the end of four seconds, it turns loop solenoid off, but then the falling edge turns on that bit memory for one scan. So next time around, this is now true, and it resets all of this, and then as the motor goes on and off, it starts all over again, which means, and I have 10 seconds in there, 10,000 milliseconds. In reality, for a loop cycle on a conveyor, it's going to be more like dozens of hours. But we can't sit around and wait for dozens of hours to accumulate before we see the loop pulse. So let's save this download and give it a whirl. First, let's turn on the simulator and we'll drag it down here. And then we will save and download. Myself, I like to keep all of the logic for something like this inside of one rung. But let me point something out to you. We could have, instead of using the following edge loop complete right here, all that we have to see is that the loop solenoid went off. So we could true if on loop solenoid and then execute this falling edge coil in a separate rung. I like to keep it all right in one spot. It's easier to troubleshoot and easier to understand. So let's start the conveyor. Conveyor's running, two seconds, three seconds, and let's stop it. 
okay? And we see that it stopped at 7 seconds, 266 milliseconds. So just use your imagination that the conveyor's been going on and off, you know, for hours. And finally, at some point, it is run long enough that the ET equals the preset. And there's your timer pulse putting out a four-second pulse. And then when this falling edge triggers, that reset this and now it's starting over again. So as long as the conveyor is running, it's accumulating. And every time it reaches the ET equal to the preset, it fires a four second pulse. Now remember, this isn't going to be 10 seconds in real life. It's going to be more like 10 hours or 30 hours or something, whatever the loop cycle is for the bearings on the conveyor system. And that's really all there is to it. Okay, that uh, more or less concludes the use of the conveyor system as a lab project in this course. We have a few things left to do, but you've gone through the bulk of this course, and we, we still have two more things we're going to discuss, but as far as the lubrication system, the use of the RTO, we're done with that project.